Yeah. Yeah. Let me just uh, put this in slideshow. Yeah, exactly. I'm uh, I'm based in Singapore and I'm uh, with Lynx Analytics. I'm actually a VP of marketing and product at Lynx Analytics, uh, which is a company uh, based in Singapore. We have um, customers uh, across the globe, of course, a high concentration of them in Southeast Asia, um, uh, in you know surrounding countries and in Singapore. But we do business in uh, in Europe as well as in the U.S. Okay, great. Thank you. You introduce yourself already. Please go on. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So uh, today, what I want to talk about is um, kind of bring you a bit of a the sum of our experiences with some of the digital banks or neo banks, as they're often called in uh, in Europe, in uh, in improving the customer acquisition and the overall uh, lifetime value uh, for these banks, and, and how we've we've approached this uh, over time. So, kind of a caveat or warning: this will not be a technical presentation. I don't, um, I will not delve into the the nitty gritty details of the data science. Um, I'm not also um, necessarily pitching a product. Um, but allow me just to maybe take this first slide to kind of just tell you a bit about links and then I'll go into uh, the uh, kind of our learnings and what we typically uh, we do with some of these digital banks. So links is what I would call a full stack uh, AI and data analytics solution company uh, in the sense that we, we don't necessarily just focus on, say, building a model, building a predictive model. Uh, or focusing purely on the data science interventions, uh, we take it from uh, kind of an end-to-end. -end. So a lot of time customers come to us and of course, first order of the day is just getting the data, getting clean data, getting proper data to achieve what they want in terms of modeling and predictions. Um, and that's also part of our offering all the way to the steps sometimes that are seen maybe as more mundane, but also important from a, uh, an adoption point of view which is kind of a, how do you develop your UI uh, or do you kind of weave in your, your visualization tools into the existing tech stack of the customer, right? So these are the kind of uh, things we do and the approach we take is that I'm not there to kind of wheel in this kind of massive solution or this thing that will solve everything. I'm there to provide some very targeted interventions um, and kind of taking ownership of the entire um, chain there. Um, of course, making sure that we do also kind of a change management and the transition to the operational teams so that over time customer becomes a bit more kind of autonomous regarding uh, or using these uh, these solutions we operate in four uh, major industries telecom which is really historically where we've come from because if you go back 10 15 years links is 12 or 13 years of history now. Uh, telecom was really where you found big data. <laughs> um, and um, so that's what we were founded on. Uh, but then eventually quickly moved on to financial services. And more recently, uh, two of our really um, interesting growth vectors, retail and life science, meaning here uh, pharmaceutical companies. So if you want to find out more about um, ourselves and our offerings, you can visit our website. And let's, uh, let's delve into this. So um, digital banks or neo banks, as I said, um, have been around now for a, a number of years, um, and it's not without necessarily growing pains, right? A lot of challenges emerge in this in this space, and there's a study that recently came out, um, May 2022, by a German consulting uh, firm, Simon Kutcher, um, and they did some primary research, very interesting, and among the 400 plus banks that they looked at determined that less than 5% of them were profitable so far. Now, of course, this, I think, speaks to the level of maturity that the market and the industry has achieved. And also maybe individually, each of these banks have not necessarily achieved the same level of maturity. And there's kind of an understanding that this is a slightly different game. You're in it to quickly acquire customers. At least that's how a lot of them are kind of gearing themselves. Uh, but still, after so, you know, such a certain time, you would expect to see a bit more. So why is that, right? Why is it that so few of them have achieved profitability? Um, lucky enough, if actually, if you look at this report, they provide some, some uh, keys uh, to the answer or you know, some starting point to the answer. So the first aspect is that, of course, there's kind of unfocused acquisition, right? So uh, typically digital banks will uh, tend to go for just pure top line 
growth, mean top line in here in, in this sense, meaning that just the true number of you know users or that sorry downloads. So that's the first kind of um, challenge. If you want, if if your goal is ultimately profitability or uh, customer lifetime value, then uh, you should maybe a bit, be a bit more selective around how you acquire customers. So that's the first aspect. And the second aspect, of course, is low revenue level per client, which is how banks make money, right? How, how, what's the typical average amount uh, that you have in your deposit account or in your checking account um, that will in large part determine how profitable your operations are, especially for a, a new bank. So, um, yeah, in fact, I mean, you can, I'm sure you can relate to this. Um, a lot of them um, just simply have a, a whole lot of customers that are using their services as a kind of glorified digital wallet, right? Where you go in and you put in some money for very quick transactions. And it's, so it's very kind of a commodity based service as opposed to a, a, a true banking uh, relationship. So the, the model that we propose, which is, you know, very, very simple, but that's always kind of the, at first at the high level, how we look at this with, with our customers is, okay, let's divide this in two parts. And let's make sure, first of all, that you acquire the right customers. Again, right here in this sense, meaning that in the long term, they will bring you value and they will bring you to profitability. And that all along, you don't lose, you lose them, you kind of keep them happy. And so you stimulate the engagement and you make sure that they remain active because that's also one of the important key of this whole thing. It's just not to you know, acquire a promising customer, but it's to make sure that they actually are using the service and transact and deposit money and, and use it. And especially as you go through the first phases of this, what we're also saying is use CX or customer experience, customer satisfaction as your North Star to kind of guide you as to um, if you're doing you know, things right or not and use kind of customer satisfaction uh, as your as really your guide to your uh, tweaks uh, at an operational level. So now let's translate this into a bit more kind of concrete uh, actions and at the operational level. So most, uh, most of our clients come up with uh, kind of a life cycle, customer life cycle, customer journey, right? Where they divide up the, uh, the life cycle of a typical customer. And again, you can use personas as, in this case and have like different personas for your target customers, but they will divide up their, their journeys um, along kind of the major stages. And it's all kind of a variation of the same theme. So in this case, what I'm, what I'm showing is we have five stages. Attract, which is how you get essentially someone to, you know, be aware of your, your app and your service and download that app and install it on their phone or device. How do you onboard them, meaning get them through typically the KYC process or the know your customer process? How do you activate or make them to activate the account, which is typically the act of depositing some amount of money, some basic amount of money in this account, make sure it's active. And then further down the line, um, eventually maybe cross-selling, so upselling them to uh, maybe a savings account, a loan of some sort, revolving credit, credit card maybe, credit lines things of that nature. And eventually, um, how do you get them to uh, endorse right, your, uh, your app in the way of providing a, a rating in the app store or in some social media platform? Um, so that's typically the, the model that's in place. And what I will go through are different interventions that we perform at each of these uh, levels. So let's start with the attract where I'm going to deep dive. And the other ones, I'm just going to show you some uh, just you know, uh, higher level examples. So let's go into the uh, attract phase. Uh, and typically what, what we do here, which is I think for uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of departments, kind of the uh, IT departments and the marketing department, the, the tough part is to not only look at the performance of your ads and your kind of awareness campaigns, from a channel point of view and an ad spend point of view, which typically the agency will kind of, you know, provide you with some kind of performance metrics, that's fine. And a lot of that information will come from the SDK that's typically on your, you know, uh, with your app. So that's like Firebase, for example. How do you reconcile that information 
with your own internal data over time to understand that this customer that I acquired two months ago through this channel, through these action, is actually developing into something very interesting for me now, or conversely, not at all. This is the, the customers that I, I got through this campaign or through this channels are not really working for me again in the long term with this long term objective of being, you know, having value with these customers and having you know, profitable operations. And this is the part we perform where we will um, we will combine the information that's coming from your SDK with information typically in your internal system and match them to arrive at uh, what we call kind of the, the, the cost curves and not just the cost curve, but also kind of an effectiveness curve, right? How effective is a channel? How effective is an ad towards your end goal? And so if I go to my next slide, this is an example of the, the cost curves uh, that we build per channel. So whether it's uh, your typical, you know, ad channels or if it's an in-app uh, ad channel, but you can get an idea of how uh, these uh, these channels are performing and the cost uh, you're you're allocating to them, and you can somewhat shift the budget from those that are poorly performing to those that are better performing. And again, it's the target here being not just pure, say, download of the app or install of the app, but taking a longer term view and saying uh, success here, and I, I'm looking at my cost relative to maybe actions further down the road, like activation and like cross-selling. You know, have I been successful in cross-selling and, and activating this customer? And what kind of segment this customer falls into? Those kind of issues. So that's how we, um, uh, we do uh, optimizing for the, the acquisition. So two examples of interventions. Another intervention that we typically uh, provide uh, is looking at the customer satisfaction. So that, as I said, using customer experience, customer satisfaction as the North Star to guide you throughout these various intervention and journey. Here, for example, we know that the, you know, the KYC phase and the duration for the KYC, I, I mean, I can tell you this from, from experience, uh, is of utmost importance in terms of the satisfaction of the customer and how they will kind of view and behave with your service on the longer term. So in other words, it's better to provide them with a stellar experience when you're trying to onboard them uh, than trying to play catch up later. Um, and so we're looking at more specifically here, and this is you know a tool that we have internally that we develop where we are looking at the drivers for satisfaction and dissatisfaction uh, for customer satisfaction. Um, with specific metrics such as uh, the KYC duration, right? We have other, you know, metrics that we look at. You know, how much how much money you have in your account, how much, how much, you know, uh, how many times did you try to contact uh, the chat line or the chat bot? Uh, how long was your interaction? Different kind of variables like this, we can relate them back to a measure of your customer satisfaction and as a predictor. Um, but this is, you know, one example of KYC duration, which is typically one of the most important piece in this puzzle. So for this, um, this example that I just went through, this kind of summarized a lot of the things I talked about, but, you know, one of the recent customers, we were able to achieve a significant, almost 50% uh, marketing spend reduction by simply optimizing uh, the digital you know, mix, or sorry, the ad and channel mix without compromising the quality and the value of these customers longer term, right? So that's, that, was, that was quite uh, beneficial. Going back to my model, so I talked about the attract piece. Now I'm just gonna quickly cover the other aspects. So the onboard, activate, cross-sell, and endorse, and give you, again, examples of interventions. And you probably you've probably been noticing that I, I you know I talk about intervention and that's because that's how we we see things. Uh, we go in and we provide very specific tactical help um, depending on where the pain is felt. Of course, I mean I can stitch all this together in, in a much more kind of comprehensive solution. But sometimes I think it helps to look at these things as micro actions or micro things you can deploy in terms of analytics, you know, or, or data science and or, or AI model to help you, you know, right from the get-go. So 
on the onboarding stage. So that's the, you know, making sure that the customer install the app and there's, there's no problem there. Uh, what we typically do is uh, we predict the number of downloads and where the questions are going to come from in terms of uh, the technical aspects that people typically like to chat about. So whether you're going to be contacted through a, a hotline or a chat bot or just a, you know, a chat with a real human or both, uh, we try to predict the load to your system or to your you know, contact center, as well as the topics that will be uh, covered so that to help you staff and, and um, plan a bit your staffing ahead. For the activation and cross-selling, so activation again is the, you know, making sure you have enough money in your account uh, so that it's worthwhile for uh, for us and that you're profitable. Um, so the first thing we do is typically we will segment the customer base. So if I, you know, give an example here, we've um, segmented this customer base in six distinct segments. So think of them as like, you know, groups of personas. Uh, if I look at the loyal low, which is the one that's highlighted right now, what this is saying is that if I'm asking them to deposit um, $500 and I give them an incentive of $50 to do so, this is where I get the, the highest conversion rate, meaning this is where I get really my success. So in other words, this person has downloaded my app, installed it, and has gone through the KYC, but there's still $0 in their account. If I give them a reward of 50 bucks, to deposit 500, very high chance that they will do it. So that's the that's how to read this graph, and you can see how you can optimize things here. If I try to you know have a higher deposit requirement or a higher incentive, it's not necessarily in this case uh, fruitful or effective. So that's again another type of intervention we do. And finally, uh, similar approach for asking people to recommend your app. Uh, we go by segments and we look at their um, engagement for uh, lookalike audiences, if you want. So how many, how many people uh, use the app in a week? Um, how frequently uh, you know, they, they make some transactions, the average amount of money and so on. And then we kind of determine the optimal timing uh, and, and people to go and, and ask for and give them a nudge. Oh, would you, would you mind you know, give, giving us a rating in the app store? So this, this is the uh, intervention for Endora. So if I kind of sum it up, sum it up I'd say that um, you know, establish a simple but solid strategic blueprint. Again, think of my model, very simple, making sure you're acquiring the right customers and that you keep them engaged. That's in, in our view in using CX as your kind of guiding principle. Deploy analytics, series of tactical tools. I keep talking and I've showed you different kind of interventions. So don't be afraid to decompose the problem in smaller parts. I think that's oftentimes we're waiting for the, the solution that will solve everything. We can solve everything, but why not solve it one, <laughs> one step at a time, making sure we're doing it right. And then just along those lines, iterate and optimize every step. And that's, that's what I had for you today. Thank you very much. If you have any more, um, you know, questions, you can reach us via our website or I'll, you know, I can take some questions now if we still have time.